this unit right here, which has changed changed our operation here at Savannah Chanel Vineyards, is the uh, the Pulse Air Portable Tank Mixer 2002. And this little unit, in its most basic uh, broken down nature, blows a really big bubble of compressed gas, either air or nitrogen. And it's different from techniques that introduce bubbles of air or gas into a tank in that it blows a very large bubble very, very quickly and repeatedly. And that large bubble rising through the, the liquid is what creates the convection current or the disturbance in the case of solids that uh, gives you the mixing. And it's essentially replaced um, pumps for certain activities. It's replaced this monster right here, the pneumatic punch down tool for us. And uh, it's basically made uh, the pump over and punch down operations, which are hip historically really time consuming and easy to screw up, has made them almost obsolete in a lot of ways and freed up a lot of cellar worker time, freed up a lot of winery time. And uh, although it might seem less important at first, uh, it's made life a lot easier on the people who do the dirty work. And so the long hours don't weigh quite as hard on them. Really a pain to be standing up here in the 100 degree sun shoving this thing around like a, um, you know, like, like moving a, uh, a pallet jack or something. It's a big, heavy piece of equipment, and it's a pain to use. Uh, it's, this is essentially effortless. Uh, it does require a little bit of manipulation. Uh, and, you know, each winery needs to sort of figure out a system that works for them. But for us, this has, uh, has really changed things. And it's sort of a, a more graphic demonstration. Um, Oops, got to turn on the, yeah, the air, sorry about that. All right, what's going on here? There we go. So it's able to, it's able to generate a lot, a, a huge burst of gas. And in a minute, we'll hook it up to the uh, to the uh, the wand and show what it does in a tank. For us here at Savannah Chanel, where this has really changed things is in the manipulation of the red fermenting red grapes. <clears throat> uh, it, it works on liquids also. That's a, a whole different set of activities in the winery for us. So that's less germane than, than cap manipulation. But essentially, this thing, this item is able to manipulate that mess without a pump or any other source of force. Explain to me what you're doing. Okay, this, this hose that I'm connecting is connected to a stainless steel wand, which we put down inside the tank. And this gives us the flexibility of not actually having to hold this unit in hand. Uh, the first year we tried one, we were actually holding it up over our shoulders and horsing it around and it was a lot of work and then somebody told me oh just put a hose on it well that's sort of obvious but wasn't obvious at the time so we're now connected through this braided line to this uh, three-quarter inch stainless steel pipe which is down at the bottom of the tank and uh, I'm going to turn it on so you might want to stand back just a little bit no, wait, no. Before you... this is Syrah that was crushed on Thursday um, it is not fermenting to speak of yet, although I believe it does have yeast in it. Um, and typically what happens once the fermentation starts is the, the cap, the skins, are raised to the top by the buoyancy of the CO2, and we need to mix them back in to enhance extraction, keep them wetted so they don't dry out and uh, become a breeding ground for other bacteria or fruit flies, and um, basically equalize things like temperature, yeast distribution within the tank. During the process, do you have to do anything or is you move it around? We move it around. In some cases, in, in some of the bigger wineries or the more well-capitalized wineries, these units would actually be installed in the bottom of the tank, three or four arranged in a circle in the tank and, and, and controlled electronically to fire sequentially. And those are fully automated. That, that system is something you basically just set it and forget it. Um, this also, because it's not fermenting, this is a big experiment for us, was whether or not 
by increasing the airflow to the machine over our, our original airlines, if we get more effective manipulation of uh, caps that weren't actively fermenting, and you'll see that when we do this one over here, an active fermentation, the cap tends to be uh, a little more discontinuous from the, from the juice, and so it fractures and breaks more dramatically because it's drier, it's been floating, so, the, so, so it's been drained somewhat. How come you just moved it around? Because that area was pretty well, has been pretty well turned, pretty well saturated. Because it's not, because it hasn't fermented enough to raise the skins to actually create a, a raised cap, it's not as important that um, we basically just want to get a certain amount of the liquid up over the top and, and recirculate and allow the skins to kind of be moved around and exposed to fresh juice. One thing I think we will do next year is we'll probably put a little foot on the bottom of this wand so it doesn't come in direct contact with the bottom of the tank because when it is in direct contact with the bottom of the tank, the tank seems to vibrate a lot more. It's always scared me a little bit how much it makes the tank shake. No, not as much as you might think. We're, we're standing on the San Andreas Fault. That group that was just in here is led by a geology professor. It's a bunch of uh, science teachers. He picked us because we're on the fault line. Now last year what we had found was that running off the half inch airline, this thing just didn't generate enough flow to de impart that much movement to a cap of whole, of whole um, unfermenting must. And so we're really, I'm really psyched with the results we're seeing here today. We just finished putting in this inch and a half airline. It was, um, there, there were a few hundred bucks worth of copper in it, but it's been a real, really good investment. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to turn the frequency up a little bit and then back down just sort of for demonstration purposes. One of the things that I find really, that really got me interested in the technology to begin with, it was adopted by a former employer of mine in uh, either 2000 or 2001. And um, they installed them in their tanks, their bigger tanks. And a friend of mine who still worked there and worked in the lab said that one of the benefits they hadn't counted on, that they were really pleased about, was that the, the entrainment of alcohol in the bubbles uh, wines that might have had 16 or 17 percent potential alcohol were actually finishing out around 14, which is a generally a fairly desirable level, um, strictly because of uh, gaseous stripping of the alcohol. And as winemakers in California tend towards higher and higher potential alcohols, um, the purists who don't want to ameliorate or add water to the alcohol or don't want to bear the cost of dealkalizing chemically. Uh, this, this holds real promise for being able to make uh, moderate 
modest alcohol wines out of very high bricks grape musts. And uh, that's been a huge boom to us. And I think it'll be in general in California as the trend towards higher and higher sugars, riper and riper grapes carries on. It, produce, it introduces a certain amount of oxygen to the fermentation. Of course, oxygen being helpful for the fermentation. It's probably not dissolving a lot of oxygen, so I don't consider it uh, a complete replacement for the aerative pump overs that most of us do. Um, but it pretty much replaces every other cap manipulation op operation that we've been performing historically. That's the one reason it would be nice to actually have the controller within arm's reach, because you can turn it off before you pull the wand out. I'll go turn it back up a little bit. Now we, we have not attempted here with these large diameter tanks, relatively large diameter tanks, we've not attempted to work it by connecting it to a valve. Uh, another friend of mine who adopted this technology a couple of years ago, most of his fermenters are real tall and narrow. Um, and he is able, with this exact same unit, to connect it directly to a valve on the tank and have it completely roll and circulate a five-foot diameter fermenter uh, in a matter of a few minutes. And so for him, that's been a huge labor saver because he literally hooks it up to the valve, turns it on, and walks away and does something else. And so I figure it buys him based on the, the, the year I was down there helping him get set up with it, I figure it buys him close to four man hours a day just by virtue of being able to, to do this instead of having to pump the tanks. So we can put the, uh, the, check, the other check valve on now and, try and do this. This tank is, more, is for many more active. Yeah. With Texas. That's right. We're back here live in Savannah <laughs> Chanel. Ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for Dave? Okay, so now we've got we've got the uh, the new and improved check valve on this unit, and uh, perhaps John can say a couple things about it after we've demonstrated it here. Uh, and we've moved over to a tank that's a little further along in the fermentation. Uh, this is our estate Zinfandel. This is the most expensive fruit we process here. Um, these are the last two fermentations in the winery. And uh, this is where the, the machinery really shines because as you'll see, the cap is up higher. It's started to dry a bit on the top. It's showing a little bit of fracturing, which is a behavior that occurs as the cap is raised and starts to, the liquid starts to drain out of it. And um, this, because this is really where the machine shines uh, in mo for most wineries, is manipulating active fermentations. This is where I'll, I'll point out that they're basically in, in all my life in the wine business and I've been at it since I was 18 years old I've seen three technologies come along that have really changed fundamentally the way we do something in the wine business and pulse air is one of them uh, the other two are uh, frequency drives controlling machines and the the, the uh, plastic picking bin replacing the old wooden picking bins so this one's had the biggest impact for me and What you're seeing there is very much what it'd look like if we connected up to the valve. The bubbles would be riding up more or less along the wall and create uh, an ever widening opening. Uh, and it's because that front of disturbance won't necessarily progress across the entire tank in this large diameter tank that if you wanted to be fully automated and entirely hands off, you'd run more than one unit equally spaced either around the circumference of the tank or in a pattern in the floor of the tank. And um, we have already agreed, the winery and I, that we're soliciting the owner to buy an, at least one automated system for us uh, for one of these tanks in the next year so we can really, really, literally have the wine take care of itself while we're asleep. And the whole benefit of uh, having your midnight punch downs be going on all by themselves is obvious 
means you get you get to be home. You don't necessarily have to worry about what your night shift is doing at the winery while you're at home. Um, and you can set it and forget it. And you can see the big difference here is how much the uh, the skins of an active fermentation, how readily they break back up and go into um, a more uniform uh, soup, if you will, a more uniform mixture. Whereas the fresh grapes over there are are still very much trying to get um, trying to be part of the juice. They haven't really liberated their juice very well. They're still full. The pectin hasn't been denatured yet. Um, the pulp is still whole. It's a harder thing to mix, but you can see that we get a very uniform and, and um, discontinuous mixture here. Or, or not just uniform and um, um, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, the grapes are really well diffused within the, the volume of liquid. One thing this will, one advantage this will offer for sure for people who are conventional punch down wineries, uh, pump over wineries, is that you'll never get dry spots in your cap the way you can with pump overs because of uh, fissuring and furrowing. This will break up the entire cap down to its smallest component. Could crank the frequency up if we wanted to. Uh, if you needed to do a, a, a stiffer cap, a denser cap, uh, we're running on the low side of recommended operating pressure, so we still have some room there. And uh, as John and I were just discussing, we could um, minimize the hysteresis losses in this hose by using a more rigid hose. So there's still places to pick up a little more performance out of the machine. Classic fracturing, fissuring, and then as the bubbles start to break through, completely separating, um, getting, you know, each fairy is getting completely re-wetted, exposed to a completely new uh, portion of the juice mass. Um, very, very efficient extraction. Another thing, an advantage it gives, in my opinion, is uh, when you're making dry additions to a fermenter, uh, food, um, acid, anything like that, or for that matter, wet additions, uh, it's always been very difficult to get uniform distribution of those kind of things in a fermenter full of fresh red musk unless you add it during the filling of the tank. This gives you a way to really effectively mix it in after the fact. For example, if you've got enzymes you want to add, but you don't want to denature them with the sulfur, you can put one of them in during the, uh, the crushing and tank filling operation. The other one can be pulsed in at a later time or date. And that's also proven to be pretty advantageous for us. That's probably even a little overkill for this tank at this stage of the game. Doing what I just did with the punch down tool would have taken about 35 minutes and I'd have been dripping sweat even here in this, in this relatively cool uh, foggy day, overcast day. And you can see how much, uh, the other thing that's interesting to me is how much moisture we condense in the, in the uh, gas that comes out 
and uh, that says to me that we're stripping a, a good deal of heat out of the tank this way also. Which isn't necessarily always a good thing, but often is. Okay, I'm going to call that good. Just the, uh, the check valve on that unit, which is more germane to the application where you're attached to the tank directly, because it keeps any wine from getting into the works. This is a higher flow check valve that, that Pulsar's come up with. How new is that for you, that, that valve? Okay, so yeah, just for this year. And again, we, we believe that the reason we were having trouble rolling a tank of fresh grapes was that we didn't quite have adequate airflow through the small line. So that's hence the bigger line um, and the, the bigger check valve is looking to achieve the same kind of thing. Okay, so that was not who I thought it would be. I think so, yeah.